I've had a, a few YouTube questions on the uh, operation and troubleshooting of the Master Brake Hydro Boost assembly in the uh, Lincoln Mark 7s and other vehicles, and I decided that the best way to explain it would be to make a quick video about it. And what you're looking at here on the bench is a uh, complete um, brake cylinder Hydro Boost assembly or brake master cylinder with Hydro Boost assembly from a uh, 1989. Lincoln Mark 7 from the junkyard. This is the complete assembly from the uh, master cylinder down to the uh, push rod that gets attached to the uh, brake pedal in the car. And it's divided into uh, basically three sections. You've got the master cylinder section here. Then you've got this intermediate section that houses the brake reservoir. And then you have this uh, pump housing section or power boost section, as well as the uh, brake reservoir. And um, let me get the uh, assembly turned around here. Sorry for the lousy view. And that's the uh, underside of it. Here you've got the uh, ABS valve body assembly which is attached to the left hand side of the master cylinder and this is where all the action takes place to uh, modulate each individual brake caliper depending upon the circumstances. And here's the uh, pump motor assembly that builds up pressure inside and you've also got the uh, pressure cutoff switch so when you first turn the key on the pump turns on building up pressure until it reaches a, a calibrated a value for the pressure switch. Once that's reached, the switch opens up, opens up a relay, and turns the pump off. And let me turn this around again. Wish I had a, a helper to uh, turn this around so I can talk about it. What that pump does is it builds up pressure here pumps up fluid into this thing right here which is called an accumulator and what's inside here is a uh, bladder and it's charged with uh, high pressure nitrogen and that pressure forces the fluid back down to provide boost to the braking system much like you'd have on a regular car with a vacuum booster instead of having a vacuum booster it's all done electrically with the uh, high pressure pump. This charges to about, I think, 3000 PSI to provide the uh, correct boost. And as you can see, it's uh, showing its age. It's got a lot of corrosion around here, which is typical. And also around where it uh, mates up to the uh, assembly down here. And when you're troubleshooting these things, um, when you're having some brake issues, nine times out of ten, the problem is going to be in one of two places. It's going to be in a failed accumulator, or it's going to be, if you can see, a bad pressure switch back here. When the pressure switch goes bad, it'll usually uh, fail closed, unfortunately, and that'll make the pump motor run continuously, even with the key off. This is a, a critical safety item, so the uh, power to the pump motor goes to a relay, but that relay is actually directly attached to the battery with a fuse link. That way there's nothing getting in the way of the flow of the current of this thing. You, you know, you can have a bad ignition switch or other components of the electrical system going bad, but it, having it directly connected to the battery is your best shot at giving reliable service. So if the pressure switch is bad, the pump usually runs all the time, and that's your first clue. The second clue is if you um, have your brake light come on continuously every time you actuate the brake pedal, that's usually a telltale sign that the uh, accumulator here is not allowing enough pressure to build up. The pump runs, charges up a little bit, and when the pump turns off it just comes right on back out again, and you end up with a uh, slightly hard pedal it's not really ever able to reach the uh, design value of uh, 3,000 pounds. 
and um, that part is the accumulators are most often what fail because it's a moving part you have a diaphragm in there and the diaphragm has to be flexible and over time it just like anything else kind of gets hard and cracked and the gas leaks out and becomes less and less effective over the years but they are replaceable a lot of people don't know that they are um, you can buy remanufactured pump assemblies with the motor the switch this pump body and the accumulator all together but that's usually a lot of money and um, the way you would replace this is the original one has a allen fitting right here that you could take in this case 5 16 allen socket and just pretty much unscrew it. They're usually not that hard to get off but you might have to uh, apply torque on here at the same time you get your hand down in, in this section and grab it as well too. You don't want to damage the uh, fitting that it screws into. And I had this fail on my Lincoln and this is what these accumulators look like. It's got a rather large opening down there and then an o-ring on the end to uh, form a seal and the new accumulator that I got didn't really have the Allen fitting on here but um, if you've got the parts fairly clean and uh, lubricate the o-ring with some uh, brake fluid you can get this on here pretty tight with your just your hand so uh, not too hard of a job to do not too hard to replace um, the master cylinders, thank goodness, hardly ever go bad on these cars. I'm not sure what kind of seals they use in here for the pistons, but it must be really good. I don't have a spongy pedal or anything like that on that car. The only thing that went wrong was the accumulator went bad on me, and I had to put a new one in. And if you want to know where to get them, there's a couple of places that I found. Uh, one place is called Prior Remanufacturing out in Texas that'll sell you the accumulators and the other place I called who actually who actually makes these accumulators is a company called HYDAC H-Y-D-A-C you can do a Google search for um, HYDAC accumulator and um, you'll be able to find them so that basically in a nutshell describes the um, operation of this system and um, how to go through some basic troubleshooting steps and uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, demonstrate how a properly functioning system works and sounds so that you can kind of compare that against what you've got and hopefully narrow in on um, the problem or whatever particular kind of problem that you have kind of using the uh, properly operating one as a uh, baseline. I'll be right back. Okay, now we're in the uh, 1987 Lincoln Mark 7, and um, I would have the hood open, but it's uh, raining cats and dogs where I live right now, and it's cold. And um, this car has been sitting for about a month, and um, I want to demonstrate the operation of the, uh, the brake system. And so what you'll do is when you turn the key to the full-on position, what you'll hear, or what you'll see, is the uh, red brake light come on for a few seconds as well as the um, I think it's over here the anti-lock brake system overhead warning light come on and um, that's going to remain on until the um, accumulator has reached full pressure and the car is ready to be driven hopefully you can hear that pump over the rain so I'll go to full on Hopefully you can hear that. I'll try to get as close to the engine as I can. You see the anti-lock brake light is on, as well as the uh, brake light. Right now the accumulator is charging up, building up pressure. The first light to go out is the check anti-lock brake light. Wish I can get both at the same time. That went out and the brake light went out. 
pump is still going. And now what we'll do is we'll deep, you should be able to, if the system is working properly, you should be able to deep press the brake pedal about three times and then you'll hear the uh, pump energize, but you'll never see the brake light come on or the check anti-lock brake light come on. There it is. Looks like mine might be a little bit weak. That just took two pumps. I hope you can hear this in the video as this as this happens. So now we're fully charged. We'll depress the brake. My battery might be low, might be one of the problems. And then of course the brake light, we'll pump it again. Brake light never comes on. So what's happening is, is as I pump the pedal and I use the uh, build up pressure inside the pressure accumulator, this pressure falls down to a certain value, closes the uh, pressure switch I was just talking about, clicks the relay which turns on the pump motor, builds the pressure back up, and the process kind of repeats itself. If the pressure gets low enough to a critical value, then the uh, brake light's uh, gonna come on to let you know that you don't have the actual design pressure. You'll still be able to stop the car, but you'll more than likely lose the anti-lock brake function and the pedal might be a little harder to depress. Uh, not to mention that if it's operating like that, you're gonna use the pump a lot more than you should and it'll wear the brushes out of the motor just that much faster. So we'll go ahead and uh, shut down. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention, um, there is a lot of pressure built up into here. This is a, uh, I mentioned before that the replacement accumulators are made by HYDAC, H-Y-D-A-C. The original ones are made by A-T-E, which incidentally is a German company that also made the brake calipers for the uh, 70 Mercedes. And it's uh, rated at 210 bar. If any, I don't have the conversion handy. Looks like this one was made in 1985. So this is really quite old. It, it would be, you know, difficult to imagine that a rubber diaphragm or, or a synthetic diaphragm in here could last that long and still hold that kind of pressure. But a critical one thing to look out for that's kind of dangerous when you change these is um, right now, since I have the key on and the system is fully charged up, you don't want to think about um, taking this off or loosening it when it's fully charged like this. And um, the best way to discharge it is to go ahead and um, shut it down. And then you just want to pump the pedal at least 20 times like this. You don't have to be hard to go all the way to the floor or anything like that. What you're trying to do is just get rid of all that pressure that's built up in there. You can't pump it too many times, really. If you want to go for 30 or 40 times, that's good, but probably no more than 40 ought to get it. And as I'm doing this, the pedal's getting more and more hard. So I'm losing the power assist feature, which is just what I want. Right about there is about enough. And now, now I'm pretty sure that the uh, pressure inside this thing is um, completely down as far as it can go. And I can safely unloosen this and uh, put a new one on and uh, get the braking system uh, functioning like it's supposed to. So hopefully this video was helpful. The, um, these accumulators, these, these first generation anti-lock brakes with the Hydro Boost on these cars, is that they're very reliable they don't really give you a lot of trouble but it's it is one of the achilles heels to these cars because the components are very expensive and it's just not something you can uh, run down to advanced auto parts or AutoZone and buy just like you can a regular master cylinder or vacuum booster for a traditional car so they are a little bit of trouble but um it is possible to uh 
fix these things and get these functioning to uh, OEM specifications and get rid of that troublesome brake light as well as uh, regain the functionality of the uh, anti-lock system because the anti-lock system is not going to work um, if it doesn't sense that it has enough pressure built up in here to actuate the uh, calipers back and forth. So, a um, little bit hard to find these parts, but um, definitely well worth it to get the system back up and running. Um, the company that I bought my replacement part from was uh, Prior, P-R-I-O-R, remanufacturing out in Texas. And uh, these guys are also made by HIDAC, H-Y-D-A-C, if you want to do a Google search on that. So, uh, hopefully that'll help you guys.